Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me to another episode of Music with Nick. Today, we got to do a marathon um, uh, sponsored by JK. Thank you, JK, for making the video happen. I'm super intrigued because I have no idea what I'm getting into. I usually um, don't look up anything on new bands or uh, new artists. Um, so this is Squeeze. Um, so... I'm very excited to do this. Thank you so much for choosing. You know, all these great ideas you come up uh, with, um, all you guys, you know, like it's it just like you bounce off each other. Um, somebody comes up with an idea and then somebody else takes a little bit of that idea and makes another marathon. So it's really cool. Um, thank you so much, guys, for all the support. Honestly, thank you. So here it goes. We're going to do... Um, the album Argy Bargy, which I kind of like had to look up how to pronounce. Argy Bargy, maybe. Um, 1980, um, Squeeze, If I Didn't Love You. We're going to do also Another Nail in My Heart. Then we're going to jump to East Side Story, 1981, the song Tempted. Then we're going to jump to the next album. A uh, song is called Hourglass, Babylon and On. This is from... 1987 and then from 1991 we're gonna do sunday street from the album play all right guys let's get into it i hope you do have fun if you're new to the channel you know if you like what you see in here please do like or subscribe to the channel but thank you so much for being here all right and all good to go walter is all good to go i love wearing this shirt by the way um when I do these reaction videos, I mean, it's incredibly comfortable. And I also have great company here with Walter Becker from the mighty, mighty Steely Dan. Um, what a band. Um, if you haven't watched our videos, um, we have almost covered every single Steely Dan song. Almost. Because we did some stuff on the side. We were just like, okay, this is going way too slow. And then we did listen to Asia uh, entirely and also Gaucho. But there's a couple of ones on, on YouTube. All right, here we go with If I Didn't Love You by Squeeze. Here we go. Yeah. 
I'm loving it. I don't know what style it is. It's I mean it does sound doesn't sound too 80s for being an 80s band. I mean at that time. But uh, I'm loving the the keyboards, the bass. It, it doesn't sound that, you know, 80s bass, you know, the boom. Um it just sounds really good. I love the slide solo here. Really cool. Almost kind of like psychedelic, but I don't know, just keeping it simple. I love how easy it is to listen to. Very, very cool. I love it. Squeeze, man. Here we go. Cool. Let's go back. Side by side. It's time to poke at the fire. But it's not tonight. Looks like fine. Taking a bite on a biscuit. The record jumps on a scratch. I love how it was boom, 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 almost like playing it. I don't know. Like it sounded, I mean, because I was like, is that the bass drum? No, no, no. It's the bass playing basically like doing like an accent with almost like playing with a pick and then with the fingers and then with a pick, it sounded like dum 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 dum, but it sounded different. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but it does sound more like finger and then pick and then finger. I don't know if they did that, but that's genius. I mean, that's just a really cool idea because I was like, are those different instruments? Oh, that's the same instrument, but just playing or maybe d low, uh, maybe here on the bridge and then lower down on the bridge, like almost touching the, uh, yeah, the bridge, um, man, really cool. I'm loving it. So, um, same album. Uh, another, another nail in my heart. This is a shorter one. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pause, you know, when it's so short. Um, but if something cool happens, I'm definitely going to comment on it. So let's see, let's go. <laughs> Tasty solo, Mwah. chef's kiss, beautifully, just beautifully um, composed, like great ideas. I don't think it was just improvised. I mean, if it was great, you know, but it was just very tasty, had a beautiful licks, nice and clean. 
just the way I love it. Awesome. Man, great solo. Great track just to listen to. You know, I'm sure uh, Alex is going to get into this. Um, this is just music that's just good, you know, just plain simply um, enjoyable, you know. Very, very cool. Let's play it again, you know, just for the heck of it. Beautiful. This is just like a case like when I first had heard Peg and I'm sorry that I'm, you know, using other bands like Steely Dan to compare when Steely Dan is so different. You know, Steely Dan obviously is more jazzy. Uh, the harmonies are more complex and stuff. But the solo, uh, that's what kind of got me on when I listened to Peg. I was like, OK, it sounds very uh, Peg is kind of like a weird one for Steely Dan because it's very, uh, I guess, made for the radio. And they told him, okay, you know, I, I don't know. They had like seven guitar players, you know, try out the solo. And then um, they finally got, uh, I think it was Jay, uh, Jay Reardon or something. And he started like this, this Hawaiian thing, you know, like... And uh, but the cool thing is about the solo, even though it's only like 20 seconds long and I and I covered the solo, it's incredibly difficult to play because even he said it's kind of like all it's kind of like very hard to get it in time and tune the whole thing. Uh, I guess he just came, you know, up with the solo on the spot and then he just recorded it. They were happy and out the door. But uh, just to to recreate the solo is incredibly difficult this is what i feel happened here a little bit like the way um he i don't know if it's jay or ray i think it's jay jay just used the amount of time to completely to the, to his advantage there's arpeggios in there you know diminished scales all kinds of good stuff even like the sliding you know like playing um uh, some, uh, I don't know if he was doing like, uh, no, I don't know. It wasn't octaves, but it was just like, this is how this solo felt. It was just felt like the guy who ever played the solo knew exactly, okay, I have so much seconds. I'm going to put this really nicely and this is how it feels. And it's just like a solo that's like very interesting to listen to. That's why I literally played it twice, but a great song. I love the the whole style. They you can hear that they're musically very savvy, 
but they don't want to overdo it because I mean, you want to put it on the radio, you want to make money, you know, so that's the problem with um, a lot of guitar players that I like, for example, uh, very much. They don't get any radio time because only maybe on special stations that are more niche to certain styles, but for the overall, you know, um, mass uh, of people that listen to just music and uh, they don't really have a favorite style of music they just listen to music this would be something that could list be that they could listen to and just say okay this was a nice song maybe they wouldn't even notice the guitar solo or what he's doing in the guitar solo but it, it sounds nice and i think that's the trick that you had to pull to become successful even if you were a master musician that wasn't good enough anymore that was something in the 70s that was appreciated um, like, you know, when we talk about Yes and ELP and Rush and stuff like that, but, um, it just doesn't set it, like virtuosity, unfortunately doesn't sell. I mean, to jazz fans or prog fans, I guess it does, but to the masses, it does not, uh, so you have to keep it simple. And th the cool thing about this band is they keep it simple while having all this musical knowledge because you hear it you hear it in the the execution and they the scales and arpeggios they they use under their music without being too uh demanding you know by the listener so this is really cool really interesting band uh so we're gonna switch now we're gonna do three albums in succession this is a year later this is 1981 and this is East Side Story instead of West Side Story. I love it. Um, tempt it. Let's go. so good wow i can't believe this is a very good song um i love it uh just like the whole r b he's got going on totally different from the first album or the first two songs that we listened to this almost reminds me of and i'm going to be very careful here and don't please don't take everything so literally i'm not comparing it just sounds something that i've heard before um but i don't like compare bands because they're all amazing and they're all incredibly talented 
and there is no competition once you're in that level of musicianship. So um, I'm not putting a down uh, a band up or down when I do this. I just it sounds similar because people have told me in the comment section, how do you dare compare this to that? And it's just it's not that I'm comparing their musicianship. It's just the sound, you know, but this sounds a little bit like. I don't know, like the commercial um, songs that I've heard of Chicago, not the like, not not the first, like I don't know, I think five albums where they're all like super complex trumpet, saxophone, drumming. Uh, no, not that. Like I'm talking about the Chicago that came after the very commercial, the. Uh, um, I don't know. I've heard some songs from the best of, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, If You Leave Me Now or something like that. It just sounds like something like that, but not. I'm not comparing it to Chicago. I know Chicago is a master full band and they're super, I consider them even like progressive or very jazzy. Um, and this is obviously not the same, but just the, the intention here, it's very friendly, very radio friendly. It's just so good, such good music. The way he's like singing this, you know, and uh, and then the keyboards and it's just laid out very, very cool. Uh, very, very intelligently with the what they can do. And but they're, you know, they're using it more for for the for the audiences, the mass audiences. And this is, I'm sure this is a hit. Um, let's go. I just want to see something. Yeah. 44 million views, 44 million listens. So yeah, this is obviously a good, good song, a very famous one. So let's continue. Let's go back a little bit. Tempted by the Very good, man. Just the way he was using the scales in his voice. Bum, 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 the, I don't know. It was like... Dun, 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 dun. Um, I'm going back to the song that I... um, I, I guess you know what I'm singing. But he was like... It sounded almost like something... And again, please don't take this so literally, uh, but something like Stevie Wonder would compose, you know, very catchy, very Stevie Wonder is a master musician. Stevie Wonder is a virtuoso and everything, but he knows how to write a song. And that's so hard. And you can be you can play Chopin, you know, or Chopin if you, <laughs> um, or whatever, or Vivaldi on the violin. Um, but Maybe you can read, you know, 
um, music very quickly and stuff like that. But how about if you compose a song? Sometimes the most simple chord progression is the hardest. Um, I've I've struggled with it as well. Like I want to compose something and I put an orchestra in and and I don't know how many chord progressions and and then I'm like okay this is a mess you know it's a, okay it's a score but what about a song a song is very very hard to compose um yeah once you get your first one down it gets easier but the, that just to f compose one song even though it's only two chords three chords four chords then it's like all already very complex but um yeah but these guys, like, this is just, they, they nailed the formula. This was very, very good. Okay, now we're going to uh, do from the um, uh, album Babylon and On. This is from 87, so a little bit later. Let's see how much they changed. Hourglass, let's go. Can't wait. This I'm loving this band. Okay, so here you can see, of course, like a clear case. This is the 80s, full on, almost the 90s, but we got now the, -da, the, the synth. We got the synth drums. We got, uh, maybe not, maybe not the synth drums, but it's more synthy. It's the whole like, bah, bah, bah. the whole like chords are very 80s. And it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. we got the sequencer, you know, it's, um, it's like when I listened, when I heard Duran Duran, um, and and I compared it to this, what I consider a great uh, keyboard, but um, you you got these sounds, you know, typical '80s, and they dropped the whole, you know, arpeggios and scales and and uh, because it doesn't, it do, it's not necessary to make money, you know, you don't have to play your butt off to 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 make the big bucks you know and this is i guess what a lot of people uh unfortunately it is you know what happens with a lot of bands i mean listen to genesis how they uh changed from something as suppers ready to land of confusion you know using uh you know sequences and you know uh, and keyboards and synth and uh or or yes you know like from something as complex as um uh you know uh right there you know <laughs> you know a roundabout or you know uh what is the most complex yes song oh my god i mean i haven't listened to everything but close to the edge i would say is pretty 
darn up there and then they come up with something as owner of a lonely heart and it's totally synthy and it works and it sells and it makes money so hey why you know play all these like these arpeggios if you can make money very very easily you know with these like almost you can almost pro program it and it plays by itself. So this is what happens to a lot of bands during the 80s, of course. And it's a sad thing. Luckily, the 90s kind of like erased the whole thing. And we got grunge, which is more like a rock genre, which is more like an indie form of like th throw everything away out of the window and just start from scratch with some acoustic guitars and some distortion. And that's also like how kind of like the metal genre died which was really really successful during this time which is very creative very difficult to play but well that's a different story but yeah just like these bands i think they just thought hey why kill ourselves when we can make very very good money with something very simple you know and this is a great example here but it's a great song i love how he sings still very very um melodically and and it just sounds really good you know but um it's just you know, just an example to set. <laughs> you know the voic the voice here the vocalist reminds me a little bit of kenny uh kenny Loggins later stuff um you know like the stuff he was doing doing top gun and uh you know also when you hear Ke uh Loggins and messina super progressive super complex and then they come up with something like top gun um danger zone millions you know it's just like it's just what happened during that time and um there's so many examples but i love it you know i love listening to that bowie era that prince era that michael jackson era instead of i love the era when michael jackson was doing all that you know because of quincy jones but then he also kind of like put all that away and it got more into like the I'm bad, I'm bad, you know. And, and it's more like the whole synthesi synthesizer stuff. And Giorgio Moroder, I mean, look what he did. Um, he revolutionized like the whole music industry with Donna Summer. I know this because of my dad. They were in Munich and my dad had this discotheque and he was involved with all these people. So I know uh, a bunch of stuff Um that what happened, you know, with the disco revolution and the whole synth, um, you know, the click, you need a click and then uh, play the music of the future. That's what basically Giorgio Moroder said, like I was was doing an album of the 60s, the 70s, and then he said an album of the future. And basically, this was the sound of the future, a synthesizer, synthesizer music. But yeah, really cool. Um, okay, now we're going to do the last song, which is Sunday Street. And this is from the 90s. Let's see how they evolved into uh, when Nirvana was playing Nevermind and Pearl Jam 10. Let's see what they were up to here. Okay, let's go.
Okay, so there was a definitely different, I mean, the band is back, they're out again, you know, to play their instruments, um, no sequencing, this is like the bass, the guitar, the, the guitar solo, the piano, it's all back, um, a little bit more complex, I love the, the style, it reminds me of, you know, like the style of like Shell Crow, um, just very positive, great music, great musicianship, catchy, uh, you know, choruses and stuff like that. I love that. So definitely a, a return to their earlier stuff, you know. But this is what I so love about these marathons. And and I'm, I'm sure this must be very, very difficult to put these together. Like, what do I choose in 25 minutes or less? Um, I got five songs to make this happen. And I do want to kind of like represent the best of and then I can make part one, two or so. Um, I tried this myself with, with one of my favorite artists. And uh, I haven't played it to, to Alexa, but it's super hard when you know, let's say, 10 or 12 albums of a certain band. What do you play 
to that person in 25 minutes what's what is their best stuff you know so it's always going to be like someone's going to say i'm sure someone's going to say oh you forgot this song you know but you also have to take into consideration that it is limited i like i wish i could just do an hour long marathon but i just don't have the energy or i i don't have the time i do have to work and do other th things you know study and you know just live um and take care of stuff but uh you know but i think jk did bring a great demonstration of the band's genesis what they were doing what they did in the 80s what they did in the late 80s and then in the early 90s and it's a great taste of what this band can do and i think uh from east side story tempted was i guess for me my favorite um and then hourglass was also great because it had this synthy taste and this is the last one i mean all five of them were just brilliant i mean the band is obviously amazing and amazing musicians but they also know how to adapt to certain times you know so uh i love that so thank you so much let me know what you think of these five songs which was your favorite era it's like when we go back and listen to rush you know we have 70s rush we have 80s rush and we have 90s rush which is kind of like super synthy and stuff we even have uh, the uh 80s uh, i think that's the 80s rush um uh when basically uh getty just like stopped playing the bass it was more like this the synthesizer um that he was playing and it has a different sound a totally different sound to 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 rush but i mean that also happened with so many other bands but uh let me know what you thought um what was your favorite track and uh let me know if you enjoyed the marathon thank you so much jk for making this happen again everybody for watching if you're still here um i do appreciate it thank you and i'll see you guys in the next video take care